Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. Now, if you saw my last video, you will know that, yes, Julian has bought a Brompton, a Brompton fold-up bicycle. You will also know, if you watch the video, that because Brompton videos, Brompton bicycles, are so popular that I wasn't able to get onto the unfolding training course until 2024 and therefore you saw an unboxing of the Bompton but you didn't see a big reveal and an unfolding of the Bompton for which I sincerely apologize but but I've been really lucky I was trawling the internet trawling the internet over the weekend because I had nothing else to do and I managed to book myself on to an Australian version of the Brompton unfolding course. So all of the uh, diagrams and the lecture and the you know, person doing the filming and so forth, all of that was upside down. So I managed to sort of turn myself around that way uh, so I could study it carefully. And I think, I think I've got it. So I'm gonna take you through the unfolding of the Brompton. I'm not sure you can see it, it's actually here and I'm struggling to lift it up. In fact, I probably shouldn't lift it up because as you know, I came off my bike and cracked my ribs. But there's a few tools that one needs apparently in order to unfold a Brompton. So I've, I've gathered them here. So I'll go through them one by one. The first thing is a hammer. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a park tool hammer and therefore it's got this nice blue on it. You don't need to have a blue hammer. They were very careful to say this in the uh, Australian unfolding video, uh, but it helps if you've got a blue hammer. So there's a blue hammer. Just put that one to one side so they'll need it later. Next thing you need is one of these, and this is a left-handed spirit level, okay? Now it only works if you're left-handed, which luckily enough, uh, I am left-handed. If you try and use it in your right hand, it just kind of waves around and it just doesn't seem to work properly. But a left-handed spirit level, that is very useful apparently. And I don't know why the Brompton people specify a left-handed spirit level, but you know, it's their bicycle. They manufactured it in Britain, so they can make the rules. My bicycle, my rules. Well, Brompton bicycle, Brompton rules. So left-handed spirit level. Next item is one of these, and this is an open-toed screwdriver, um, which you can, get, uh, you can get from Amazon. You can only get it from the Indonesian version of Amazon, but if you order it from there, uh, you'll be able to get it. It's $199 plus postage and tax, but I'm afraid that's a, a legacy of Brexit. So that's an open-toed screwdriver. We're going to need that later. Uh, moving on swiftly with the tools. I hope you're making a note of these. Uh, this is a girdle tightener. Now, uh, uh, if you are the, the sort of person who wears a girdle, uh, and if you're not the sort of person who wears a girdle, I suggest you do wear a girdle because apparently it's important uh, when you're doing the unfolding of the bottom. So there's a girdle tightener. I managed to have one of these already, and you may have one of these in your in your toolbox or your, your spouse or your better half may have one. But if you look around the house, I'm sure you'll be able to come across. Perhaps ask one of your, your grandparents, a maiden aunt, perhaps an old teacher or a priest perhaps, uh, they may well have uh, a girdle tightener in their box as well. So I'm really getting to the end and this is, this is a standard tool that you're probably all familiar with and this is a torque wrench. Okay now this is a special, well it's not really a special version, um, but it's a version of a torque wrench that you can talk to. So you can say to it, uh, good morning torque wrench and it will say, uh, good morning Mr. Hutchings and you could say, how are you feeling today? And it will say, actually I'm feeling fine Mr. Hutchings. So it's a torque, it's a torque wrench, speaking wrench, a bit like a speaking clock or a talking clock. So a torque wrench and this has got, it's got a bit on it. I'm not sure what the bit is, but apparently the bit is something you're going to need uh, when you're unfolding the Brompton. So we're going to put that to one side. And now uh, the unfolding of the Brompton uh, uh, has to be done uh, outside. I don't know if you've got a Brompton or if you're thinking of getting a Brompton, but you cannot unfold uh, and, and therefore fold up a Brompton in the house. There is a special chip embedded uh, in the Brompton that says it can't be done in the house. It's very much an open air job. So we're going to be moving, we're going to be moving outside. Now we're going to be moving outside of the garage uh, into the open air, into my garden actually, where I'm going to attempt uh, to follow the, what I can remember at least of the upside down Australian instructions for unfolding a Brompton. So come with me and be prepared.
Okay, well, we've come outside here uh, into the garden. Uh, now, the camera is quite some distance away from me, so I can't actually see the screen. So, whether you can see anything uh, on the on the video, of course, is another matter. So, there's a few other things. Uh, first of all, one of the uh, one of the things that the Australian version recommended. Uh, was that you dress appropriately for your unfolding activity. They, they suggest uh, loose fitting clothing. This is a kind of rugby shirt, which I got from Fat Face. You can wear a rugby shirt or you can wear uh, some other sports, sports shirt. Um, loose fitting trousers. These are some track pants, which I've got from uh, Marks and Spencers. Um, and and if, you're, uh, if you're a lady, if you're a gentleman, uh, loose fitting, comfortable uh, attire. Uh, is always the best thing to wear when unfolding your Brompton. The other thing that they suggested uh, was that you wear you wear gloves uh, because obviously if you've been if you've been cycling outside or if you've been cycling inside, uh, you may find uh, that your Brompton is quite dirty. Uh, if you've been cycling through London, it could be covered in dog shit, could be covered in uh, uh, cat shit, other kinds of shit are available. Or, or, of course, anything that you might pick up in the gutter or a bus lane or pavement, obviously, when you're riding on the pavement. Or, or things that, that passing motorists or, or bus drivers or taxi drivers throw at you uh, could obviously end up on the bicycle and therefore it could be quite dirty. So you want to be careful, you want to protect yourself, you want to wear gloves. You can wear a mask if you want, you can keep your helmet on if you want. I've chosen chosen to remove my mask, chosen to remove my helmet, so uh, safety first, obviously. The other thing is, you may be thinking to yourself, well, uh, I've bought a Brompton and I got an instruction booklet uh, with it, so why do I need to watch your video, Julian? Well, if you've tried to read this uh, instruction booklet, and I've tried in the various different uh, languages, I'm afraid I can't make head nor tail of it. And all the pictures, they've reproduced the pictures in the different languages, and uh, that makes things even more complicated. So I always find that a video is the best thing to watch to help you to unfold your Brompton. So I've got my, I've got my tool table here beside me. I've got my various tools that I mentioned in the earlier part of the video. So I'm ready now uh, to start with the process of uh, uh, undoing the Brompton. So step one, and we're going to do this by the numbers. So it might be an idea if you've got a notebook, if you write down uh, these various numbers, because then you'll be able to do it yourself in sequence, uh, should you ever be mad enough to buy your own Brompton. Now we're going to start uh, step one, and this is where we need the hammer. Okay, we're going to hold the hammer in our left hand like that. We're going to look at it closely. We're going to observe the hammer. Uh, and then we're going to put that down because we don't need that for the next uh, piece of our action that we're going to do. And the piece of action that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to undo this, this, thing, this thing here, uh, which is called a clamp. Okay, and it's a clamp on the seat. All right, so the clamp on the seat is this thing here. All right, so I've undone it. Uh, with my left hand and now it's open. So you see that? The clamp on the seat, I've opened the clamp on the seat. And with the clamp on the seat opened, I'm now going to raise the seat. Did you follow that? All right, so that's step one. All right, step one. Step one is always easy to remember because it's usually the first step. So step one was opening the clamp, and we could probably call that step four, actually, because step one was opening the clamp, step four was raising the seat. So I've raised the seat. You see, I've raised the seat like uh, Lazarus being raised from the dead. So I've raised my Lazarus seat up to the certain height that I need it to be. Now you may need your seat at a slightly different height. Uh, if you're taller, you may want it up here. Unfortunately, you're going to be out of luck because it won't go up that far. Uh, or you may, you may be a, a short person, person of restricted growth, in which case your, your seat is going to be down lower. But this seat is at the, the rough height that I need it to be, so I've, I've, secured, the, I've secured the clamp. I don't, you, you may not have seen me secure the clamp, but I've secured the clamp, and that's going to stop the seat from moving. So that's been particularly useful. Uh, now, so that was step one, I hope you're writing this down, and that was step four as well. So now we're going to move on uh, to step 17. Now you may wonder uh, what happened to the steps in between. Well, that's the, one of the, the things about the Australian version of the un, uh, unfolding Brompton uh, uh, training course that I went on, that they missed out uh, various numbers. I'm not quite sure, maybe an Australian thing, may not be. So, uh, step, uh, was it 17? Step 17 is going to be raising the handlebars, all right? Now these are the handlebars here, right? They're, uh, 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 they're, not, they're not moving. I uh, don't know why they're not moving. Uh, there must be a reason why they're not moving. Uh, oh, there we are. They've moved, okay? Right, now they, they did say, 
uh, in the Australian version of the video, this is one of the hardest bits to do, the, un the unclamping and the raising of the handlebars. So there we are, I've unclamped and I'm raising the handlebars. See that, I've raised the handlebars like that, I'm raising them up to this level. And there's a clamp here, uh, which I will show you separately, and I'm now tightening it so that the handlebars are now tightened at the right angle. Right, this was the clamp that you saw me tighten up and I'll just move closer to it so you can see there we are, I'm untightening it and now I'm tightening it up again you see what I mean? I've, un I've tightened the clamp on the uh, stem and if we rise up there we can see the handlebars see the handlebars attached to the stem we can go back, just check that our seat post clamp which is here uh, has not moved, luckily it hasn't so we can move on to the next step. Now having raised the handlebars up to the right height, uh, we just want to check with our open-toed screwdriver uh, that they're in the right height. And the way we do this is that we hold the open-toed screwdriver just like that. Uh, we hold it against the handlebars just as I'm doing there, holding it against the handlebars just as I'm doing there. And now we can check that the handlebars are at the correct height so we no longer need the open-toed screwdriver. So now we're going to move on to uh, step 27. Uh, again, we've gone from step 17 to step 27. Uh, don't worry about the steps in between. So we had step one, we had step four, we had step 17, and now we're going to have step 27 and step 27 is going to be one of the hardest of the whole processes and uh, that is to do the next step of unfolding the Brompton bicycle and what we have to do is you know, this is this is the wheel here and what we have to we have to do something like um, uh, we have to what do we have to do we have to oh yeah right you see I've got, I've got a little bit a little bit confused there um, but you'll notice that I'm doing a kind of on a strange action where I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of I'm sort of bending and I'm twisting. Do you see what I mean? I'm bending and I'm twisting, uh, which is not not ideal uh, when you've got cracked ribs uh, like me. I don't I don't say you need to have cracked ribs. Uh, it's, in fact, it, it doesn't help at all with the unfolding. But if you've got cracked ribs like I have, uh, then you're going to find that particular step a little bit difficult. So that is uh, step 27, wasn't it? Which was the unfolding of the center tube clamp. Okay, we call that the unfolding of the center tube clamp or uh, U-O-T-C-T-C uh, -T -T -C, uh, for short. Uh, and you'll see that, you'll see that written on the, uh, the, the Brompton uh, so that you'll know next time. So we'll have a little close up of what I did there uh, so you can see it in more detail. So here is the center tube clamp, all right? And we're going to put it on and tighten it up. And it's quite difficult to do this because I'm doing it with one hand and my trusty, trusty camera assistant is holding the, the camera with my other hand. And that's make things a little bit awkward. So we're, we're tightening it up there. And uh, come on, tighten up your sod. Uh, this is where the open-toed screwdriver might have come in handy, but unfortunately we've put it down so we no longer have it available. So we tighten up the clamp and now, now we can see that the uh, centre part of the bicycle is secured. We've got the, the front, front part here with the, the front wheel and the handlebars and that's now secured with that clamp to the rear part. Okay, and you'll see the advantage of this particular model is with the rear rack, uh, the bicycle supports itself on the rear rack. There's not always the case with other Bromptons. All right, so that was step uh, 27, the use of the uh, 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 open-toed screwdriver. That came in the previous section. So what the tool that we're going to need here uh, is the girdle tightener. And the girdle tightener, you saw as I uh, did the earlier part of the video in the garage, we've got the girdle tightener here. And we just put it uh, on, the, on the clamp there. See, I'm putting it on the clamp there just to make sure that it's properly tightened. And that's worked effectively. So the girdle tightener is not a tool that you use particularly often, but when you need to use it, you certainly need to use it. And that's what we've done here. So the bike, you, start, you can say to yourself, Julian, uh, or if your name is Julian, if you're, you may have other names, of course, um, you can say to yourself, well, the bicycle is nearly 
uh, nearly how we would expect a Brompton to look. So we're going to move now on to the next and almost the final stop, uh, step, not the final step, uh, but this is the next step and this is step 55. The steps in between, obviously they're missed out in the Australian version of the unfolding video. I'm not quite sure. I have written to them, they asked them, but I haven't had a response yet. Uh, email takes quite a long time to get to Australia. But what we do, right, is we hold, we hold the bike, hold the bike by the suit tube and by the handlebars and we kind of swing it. See, we kind of swing it. Oh, do you see, when, you see what I did there? Ah, uh, that was a very satisfying movement, then, wasn't it? No, uh, step 56, a very satisfying movement. And what has happened uh, is that the bicycle has unfolded and it's secured here um, with, with a kind of clip that stops it. Uh, I used to have a Bompton before. You see what I'm doing here? I used to have a Bompton before. And when you did that, you lifted it up. Because it wasn't secured at this particular uh, suspension block point, uh, the bicycle used to fall apart, which was very annoying. Uh, but now they've corrected that, they've added a kind of little clip and that stops it falling down. So let's just support the bicycle there. Let's hope it doesn't fall over. And so what I've done is I've swung the back of the bike up and now the suspension block here is now locked against the rear of the frame. So if we kind of roll the bike along, you can see it's looking looking almost like a normal like a normal bike and if we pan back uh, you can see the bike next to those plant pots there um, you don't need the plant pots but they're certainly useful uh, when you're doing the unfolding exercise because it helps you support the bicycle now the last the last stage of the unfolding of the Bompton I'm going to turn the bike around now so you can see this because you'll notice that one of the one of the special features uh, of the Brompton fold-up bicycle is the left-hand pedal here where I'm pointing. You can see where my finger is pointing. My finger is pointing downwards and I'm pointing downwards to step 77 uh, which is the unfolding of the folding pedal. So what I've done, I've taken the, the pedal in my left hand, right? You may want to take it in your right hand but I've taken it in my left hand and I've unfolded that pedal. Do you see what I mean? I, so I'm going to just put it back again this year, I'll put it back there and now I'm unfolding it again and now there we are. The uh, unfolding of the Brompton uh, is complete. Now uh, I appreciate this video has taken place in real time and therefore it's taken uh, three and a half hours and almost two days uh, to film it but at the end of the day uh, we have an unfolding uh, Brompton, an unfolded Brompton according to uh, the Australian version of the Brompton Unfolding Training Programme. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. There may be another video about how to fold it up again, but I'm going to need to get on another training course in order to do that. So I'm not sure when that's going to be. I'll surf the internet and see if I can find something. In the meantime, uh, if you like my videos, please like my videos. Uh, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I've, I often forget to say that, but I'm supposed to say that. Please give me a thumbs up. Please don't give me a thumbs down because that makes me cry, particularly at weekends. But if you give me a thumbs up, uh, if you subscribe, if you tell your friends, and I'm sure you also know that all of my videos, the money that I raise from them, which is in vast, vast amounts, although not as much as some YouTubers, uh, goes to support the Vine Food Bank, which is in Croydon in the United Kingdom, and goes to support people who are less fortunate than themselves. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, see you next time.